<laughs> There's so many of them down there. It's so cool. You get to interact with the fish on live scope with the hard bait. Cold water, 43 degrees, almost 44. And they're just knocking the bark off that thing. Look at that nice, healthy, large mouth. Oh yeah, it's looking good. It's looking good. Oh, he missed it. He'll come back. Oh, he's all over that. There he is right there. That's a nice one. <laughs> you can see him coming right off of the rocks there and he's got buddies all over him. One, two, three, four, five, six other, six others with him. There we go. It is fun. They're a different animal when the weather gets cold. You definitely have to... Light line is critical for getting the bait down deep. Oh, this guy must have kind of took a swipe at it. Kind of foul hooked him mm. a little bit on the side. Nice little bass, though. Thank you, buddy. Good little starter. But that's just classic rock spot, wintering hole, essentially. Look at them all. Right there, look at all of them. One, two, three, four, five. There's like, I don't even know how many of them there are down there. There's a whole school of them. You can see there's a rock spine that goes up at stair steps. Those fish are relating very heavily to it. <laughs> Which is just such a classic winter activity. <laughs> Is. That is fun. Get to watch them come up and eat your bait. Not a big one, but he wanted it and he has buddies with him. A little fart. Something's gonna happen right up at the boat. God, right there. I don't even have, I, that's all, that's all. That's how much line was at the end of my rod, right there when that fish bit. I set the hook and then that was it. You have to have patience with them for sure because there's something about these fish just wanting to like slam something against the surface of the water you know they can't they feel like that bait has nowhere to go so they don't have any problem coming way off bottom to eat something but if you burn it by them and don't stop it you're never going to give them a chance to eat it And you can see that's when that fish bit, that's how much line I had out at the end of my rod right there. And he slammed it. Pretty nice bass. You know, this is kind of a unique bait. It's kind of a hybrid crankbait, jerk bait. You know, it's got that wide spoon bill on it. But then it's not long like your traditional jerk bait. So when everybody's throwing a longer three hooked jerk bait, you know, this is just something a little bit different that uh, might get you a few more bites at the end of the day. The Shiner minnows around here have a body profile about like that. You know, maybe, maybe they think it's a bluegill or something along those lines with the, just a little bit taller back to belly there. I don't know if I can coax those up or not. Oh, that deep and that far. Maybe with that long cast, I can get it close enough. You can see I just gotta, I just have to get it down a little bit deeper. If I can get it down in their face more, it's gonna be money. So I 
Stopped at Thousand Lakes and grabbed a couple split shots here just to try something. I, ideally, I'd have some suspend dots or strips, but this is just kind of a poor man's version of that. Ideally, I just smash one of these onto the split ring, just a little teeny tiny split shot. This doesn't even tell me how heavy they are, so I can't even tell you how heavy this thing is but it's very tiny. It's like a number two shot in a duck load. This is super fun to do with cold hands. Okay, right there on the split ring. Then I'm just gonna take my pliers here and just smash it on. Lead is so soft that it kind of it molds and smashes on so that should stay on there for a good little while but I put it in the center of the bait so hopefully it'll keep it from going nose up or tail up it should just ultimately suspend naturally in the package this bait comes as a slow rise slow float and as you can see by just dropping it in the water now it's the opposite. Now it's a very slow sink, which looks about right, honestly. <laughs> Just crazy how you can let it sit there. That, that's just a whole school of bass down there. Well, that kind of sums it up, I guess. I started off with the I started off with the split shot off. Caught the aggressive ones that would come up to the surface. And then I slowed down, added a little bit of weight to the lure, which then allowed me to slow down, sink the bait, and get it into the strike zone, which was uh, proved to be successful. You know, the boat sitting, I caught this fish in about 18 feet of water, and he came up for it, so. Kind of an interesting take on, you know, if you don't have suspend dots or or uh, sus suspend strips, you can just kind of smash a little split shot onto your jerk bait just to get it to suspend the way you want, whether it's sinking or floating. There, I'm scrubbing the bottom a little bit more, getting it down in their face. That one came after it. He just pushed the, just pushed slack line into my rod but they're biting as you can see i mean there's still like some snow around <laughs> we have some cold cold weather that's a pretty nice one right there not bad he piped it piped 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 Right now, it's definitely all, all about getting it into their, kind of getting it into their bubble, essentially. If it's not in the right zone, they just, they're not that willing to come up. Real pretty markings on that one. Look at them, cold, cold bass. Yeah, ice freezing up on the guides. That's the one nice thing about light braid. This is a six pound, this happens to be 131. So it's really, really light. So I, it's pretty forgiving when it, and you know, when you have cold conditions like this, as far as sailing through the guides. You know, these are kind of smaller guides too. If you're struggling with it, I would recommend a rod that maybe has larger diameter guides all the way through the blank. But since I'm using very, very thin light braid, I'm not really having that issue. Paired with a eight pound fluoro leader, my knot, it's real trim tight. That way everything just slides through the guides nicely. 
you know, you want a long cast, try and get as long a cast as you can. I'm kind of bucking into the wind right there. But with that thin braid, I'm able to cut water, get a lot of depth out of my lure, and not have issues with freezing or anything like that. You know, it does freeze up a little bit, but it's still able to slide through the guides nicely. That's the biggest thing in fishing cold weather is just failure, you know. You don't want to, you want things that low maintenance when it's cold. It's hard enough fishing like this the way it is. So to mitigate any headaches, you know, anything helps between, you know, a little heavier bait, maybe a longer rod to make a longer cast, potentially a bigger arbored spool also that helps you get out there further, which in turn gets the bait down to the fish and you catch them. If I'm not using a bait caster, and I'm, I chose a spinning rod today just because, you know, I feel like I can cast a little bit smaller jerk bait such as this one. We don't have a ton of wind, but the wind that I do have, you know, I still have to, I'm positioned so that the fish are up here, you know, I'm anchor locked and I can, I can fire a pretty good cast out beyond those fish, get the bait down to their level. But then the smaller, you know, this happens to be a little bit smaller arbored spool. That slows my retrieve down. But the biggest thing for me is when I do hook a fish, I tend to get a little rammy with them when I first hook them on a jerk bait. And I end up tearing a lot of hooks out. So a little bit smaller arbored spool allows less line pickup, which allows less, you know, torque on the fish. Because when I hit them, I tend to want to get them into the boat, you know, and uh, it just seems it, I don't really have that issue with a uh, bait casting setup, but with a spinning reel, if I do go to the bigger arbor spool, I just lean on them a little too much, and and you know you tend to skin hook some of these fish when you're fishing with a jerk bait, so that just is a personal thing for me. A little bit smaller arbor spool just allows me to not quite get on them as hard. And I'll admit it, I tend to horse them a little bit. So smaller spool just helps me with that. You know, along with the braid, the sensitivity of a rod is a big deal. And, and this rod is, is ultra sensitive. It's probably one of the most sensitive rods that I have in my fleet. Um, the bite is subtle, you know? It's not electrifying like a big jig hitting the bottom and boom, they smoke it, you know? You're, you're, I'm, I'm watching the bait with, with live scope and I can see those fish. I'm kind of coaxing and I'm, I'm pulling ever so slightly and twitching and I just, I'm, I'm just feeling for anything that's slightly different. Sometimes they pound it, but other times they come up and they just kiss it. And, and with those real sharp hooks, you can, you can stick them. This is a 7.3, like a little bit. It's not a super long rod, but Usually I stick around a seven foot rod. Seven three gives me just a little more length, which allows for a little bit longer casting distance. And the medium and light is for, you know, sensitivity and, and tearing hooks. I don't want to tear hooks out. And paired with the braid, you know, I get very good positive hook set with the braid, you know, very, very minimum stretch. You might think of a, a medium light rod being a little bit of a little bit, you know, kind of undergunned. But for this open water application, you know, these fish are hanging around rock and that's about it. Relatively open water. So when I do hook one, it's not like they're binding me up in a bunch of weeds or anything like that. So it's just a matter of fighting them through clean water. You know, there's no, there's no weeds, there's no cattails, nothing like that right now. It's just open, clean water. The only thing they're relating to is a little bit of rock down there. Oh, I got that guy's attention. Oh, he faded back. Oh, you know, he's coming. He's coming. Oh, he smoked it. That is the coolest feeling. You can see on live scope, he, uh, was coming up to it and then he faded back. Then I just paused it for a really long time, which is pretty typical this time of year, a long pause with a jerk bait. And as he was closing the distance to my lure, 
I just slowly started pulling. And then, dink, ate it. You can see that's a pretty decent large mouth there. Real nice one. Chunky. Had him right in the corner of the lip. It's pretty, pretty large mouth. The second hook got him kind of by the belly. Right there. Just because there's snow on the ground doesn't mean you can't catch fish.